So I just got back from my second screening <laughs> of the Super Mario Bros. movie. I've already seen this movie twice, so that should already tell you how I feel about this movie. But for those who are still asking, here's some first or I guess second impressions. I really love this movie. Yeah, there's going to be some critical things that I will mention, but I'm not going to go into this like a movie critic. No, man. I've been wanting a Super Mario Brothers movie like this for a long time. I am a defender of the 1993 Super Mario Brothers movie, but I've always said a fully animated Super Mario Brothers movie is something I've always wanted to see, and this hits it so many times. The best way I can describe this movie, and I mean this in a purely positive way, this is like a big budget Nintendo approved version of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, the cartoon portion, where the Mario Brothers plumbing their game, found a secret warp zone, working on the drain, and the Prince of Hand and Mushroom Land. It is that, but like bigger budget, more in line with the games, and it's so much fun. I was smiling the entire time I was watching this movie. Every time a certain sound or a certain thing was said or a certain thing that was done, whether it was a comedic thing or a Nintendo Super Mario reference thing, I just kept smiling. I just kept feeling happy. Dug this movie. Dug it, dug it, dug it. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's colorful. The Mushroom Kingdom looks gorgeous. But Brooklyn looked pretty cool in this too. They definitely made like their Nintendo cartoon version of Brooklyn in this. You get to see different kingdoms, some a little bit less than others, but you get to see all these different worlds. And of course you have Mario eventually meeting Donkey Kong and the other Kongs. That is probably the most fleshed out part of the world in addition to Brooklyn and the Mushroom Kingdom. Definitely feels like a, hey y'all, do y'all like these Kongs? Like, could we did a spinoff of these Kongs. Would you be would you be cool with that? Okay, just just checking. <laughs> Which yes, I would be cool with that. Do a Donkey Kong spinoff. Donkey Kong Country the movie. Let's go. Do it right now. <laughs> also, Luigi's Mansion the movie. Also, do that. I love all the looks of it. Everything feels like it's pulled right out of the game into the movie. They make references to so much of Mario's era. There are references to old Mario games, the original Mario games. There's references to the newer Mario games, like 3D World. Of course, we get the power up. Some of the ones we saw in the trailers. There's also a couple of ones that they get that we did not see in the trailers, which I was very excited to see in this. And that just gives me hope that if they make a sequel, that they can put even more power up. I'm so down for it. The carts, the carts of course there because Mario Kart's a big thing, but it was cool that they were able to reference that as well. I mean, they reference a lot in this movie. And this might be a bit of a spoiler, but they don't just reference Super Mario Brothers in this. They also reference a couple other Nintendo games, not in the same vein as they do with Super Mario because that's the story that we're being told. But there's, you know, if you look in the background, you might notice a place or two or a sign or two that may be referenced to either Mario stuff or other Nintendo stuff, which I thought was pretty cool. Kind of reminded me, real talk, of the 93 movie when you look through Dino Hatton and some of those buildings are named after <laughs> different Mario characters. They do something like this with other Nintendo properties. I thought that was really cool to establish that the Nintendo universe is out there. The score, the score is so beautiful because it is this nice cinematic movie score constantly peppered in with Mario music and hitting at directly right times with some of the cues. Like there was something that was on screen that was from Super Mario Bros. 3 and they play a little bit of Super Mario Bros. 3 in it. There's a part where Luigi is lost and he has a flashlight. You can hear this hint of Luigi's Mansion theme. It's just like all these little elements that they put in that cater to the movie, that make the movie work, but if you are a hardcore Mario fan, you'll recognize those things and appreciate those things. I think that's great. The nostalgia of it, it is literally so much a love letter to the franchise and the history of Super Mario Brothers all the way to the early games, all the way to Donkey Kong. I know there's gonna be some people who are gonna be like, well, there's too many references. I was like, well, well the 1993 movie, you complain there wasn't enough references. Now you complain there's too many references. What is the right amount of references that you need? <laughs> I would rather have too much than too little. So I think it was fine that they did this because it reminded me of all the wonderful things that are in Mario and I got to see it in this movie. They sang the Super Mario Brothers Super Show theme song. They already knew. They put that part in and went, this gonna make Andre like the movie, and they were right. That exact conversation happened, I know it. I also just love the animation of this. For this to be a CG movie, it feels very cartoon, like 2D cartoon. There's a lot of times where like Princess Peach's face will have these very big eyed facial expressions like her face will almost stretch a little bit there's a time when mario is on a cart and he's about to fall off and you can literally see his face like stretching from side to side and i just love that kind of animation because sometimes with cg animation we sometimes lose that what they call squats and stretch 
type of movement of cartoon characters, which is very natural in our 2D animated cartoons. So it was so nice to see that in this movie. It was like a nice blend of what Illumination kind of does with animation and also what Nintendo kind of does with animation and like them blending it together and taking it to a next level as a result of that. And as far as the story, it's simple. It's exactly what you expect from the game. Mario goes into the Mushroom Kingdom, this new land, has to learn how things work, meets Princess Peach, Bowser's there trying to take over the world. They also throw in how Bowser feels about Peach, which is something that has been in some of the Mario works, both game and other media. And Mario has to go on his adventure. Chris Pratt's voice is fine. He does make references to the classic Mario voice while also doing his own thing. And his chemistry with Luigi, with Charlie Day's Luigi, works really well. Obviously, they work together on the Lego movie, so they work well together with this. King of Michael Key is Toad is a treat the entire time. He's a very funny character. Anya Taylor Joy as Peach, the character of Peach, is a really cool character, has an interesting backstory that might also be something that we'll get to explore or in future movies. Jack Black is great casting for Bowser. He plays that character so well, both the very evil, angry, ferocious side of Bowser, and also kind of this like, uh, kind of depressed, <laughs> kind of like, like trying to fill a void in his life, but doing it the absolute wrong way <laughs> and being a little toxic at that. And of course, because Jack Black is Bowser, he sings a song <laughs> and I didn't think it would get in my head. I was like, oh, that's a pretty simple song. It's not gonna get in my head. It's in my head and I can't get it out. So they do a really good job. They also have some established voice actors in this movie. Kevin Michael Richardson voices Kamek, the Magic Koopa. Eric Bowser does some voices in this. Jessica Chico, Carrie Payton, Scott Minville. I saw some other voice actor name. I think it's all Chris Summerin, a couple other people posted in the credits and when some of those voices pop up in the movie as supporting characters yeah you can you can feel a little bit of difference of like okay yeah that's that's a voice actor right there not to say that the celebrities did a bad job it's just like you can just feel the distinction especially because some of these voice actors are voicing multiple characters within the movie shout out to charles martinet though man charles martinet is in this movie it's a really cool thing one of the things he does i actually guessed before the movie came out, and I was very proud of me. Eh, pat on the back. But, uh, but seriously though, I liked what they did with him in this movie. I feel like it was still respectful to a certain degree and still kind of keeps him Mario-ish, if that makes any sense. So yes, Seth Rogen does his laugh as Donkey Kong. <laughs> but you know what, it's fun. Everyone's having fun with this. One of the things I really liked about this movie, and I feel like this had to be intentional, I'm giving the movie credit that they thought of this, they keep this personality of Mario of he never gives up. Every single time he fails, he just gets up and tries again. Kind of similar to every time that we fail playing Mario, we just start the level all over again. So that whole training sequence that we saw in the trailer, like he keeps doing it, but it's not long until he starts eventually getting it. Just like when we play the video game, we eventually know how to get through it after trying it a few times. That was a really cool personality that they gave to Mario throughout the course of the movie. And I thought that was really neat. You can definitely feel Shigeru Miyamoto, you can definitely feel Nintendo having some very direct involvement with this, which they very much have talked about. They made it very clear to everybody that this time, Nintendo's directly involved with making this movie happen. You can feel that. That's probably why sometimes it does feel a little safe or it does feel a little bit like they're keeping it very strict to what we know about Mario and not taking too much liberties to it is because, you know, Nintendo is behind it. But again, they did that before in 93 and people complained. So you can't be surprised. They're like, look, let's just play it close to the chest. Let's just do it like they expect from the games and not try to like do anything too meta or too out there, or too weird. And I think that's fine. It's cool to have movies with extra layers like that Barbie movie that's gonna come out. I can tell that's gonna probably have some extra layers than what we're expecting. And that's fine. I want movies like that. It's nice to have movies that challenge us like that. But it's also nice for a movie to just go, this is what the game is like. Let's do the movie like that and let's have a good time. And that's what this movie does, and I'm happy with it. I'm already gonna see it a third time. I already know this. <laughs> like, I already have talked to some people. I'm like, I'll be there. Because it's the internet, I guess I gotta give a criticism, whatever. Anyway, there are a couple of criticisms that I have about the movie. Just a just little nitpick thingies. The movie is very fast paced. It moves along, keeps going so much from one scene to the next. And I actually thought for a couple times, like I wish this was a little bit longer, but then I kind of think about it and I'm like, well, it might be possible that if it went too long, it might be too much. Fast pace works for me because I feel like it keeps the movie energetic. It keeps the movie flowing. I feel like if it were ever to slow down because the plot is very simple, it could get to a point where there could be a lull. So yeah, well, I could have accepted maybe a few more minutes of this movie to just flesh some more things out. 
the pacing didn't really bother me that much. And I think if anything, that just says how good a lot of the stuff is if I'm wanting more of it. And they don't go too crazy with pop culture references. They don't floss or anything like that. The only thing we get is we do get some pop music, but even with those, and I don't know, this might be me giving the movie too much credit, most of the songs that they use are songs from the 80s. So I don't know if that was done on purpose because since Mario originally was from the 80s that they decided let's use 80s music in this. That might be stretching, but I still thought that was cool. They could have picked some like newer songs. They're like, no, no, let's do Mario music and like old school 80s music. But there's something that happens with Mario and Donkey Kong that was very interesting to me. Kind of like a, almost a heartfelt moment in the movie. And while I absolutely enjoyed it, there's a part of me that goes, I wish that was Mario and Luigi. Because there's something they established very early in the movie about Mario never gives up to the point where he almost endangers himself. On the flip side, Luigi is very passive, very scared, doesn't take a risk. But when they come together as the Super Mario Brothers in Brooklyn, they balance each other out with their different personalities and that's what makes them the strongest. It's a theme that's kind of plays throughout the movie. Luigi's doing his own thing for a little bit of the movie by himself because Luigi ends up in Bowser's area. So Luigi has to try to figure out how to get out while Mario tries to figure out how to save his brother. So there's certain parts that happen with Mario in his arc that I wish Luigi was there with him so that by the time we get to the finale where they want to wrap up both characters arc could have been a little bit stronger if they had a couple of scenes where Mario had with Donkey Kong where Luigi was maybe there too. Even if I wanted a couple of things different, they're not strong enough for me to not like this movie. Look, I heard about the Rotten Tomato score, but I've also heard about the Rotten Tomatoes audience score. This is a classic throwback type of film, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yes, I want my deep, complex, cinematic universe movies, but sometimes I want a very fun 90 minute movie that puts a smile on my face, and that is what this movie does constantly. I was literally like this. Like I felt like the Joker <laughs> sprayed something in my face. I loved how much it took into account what Mario Brothers is, and made it pop on the screen. And considering that where video games are nowadays, where it's possible to be a gamer and never play a Mario, it's cool to see that Mario still has this much of a clamp on pop culture, that this franchise can have a movie like this that is so faithful to the games, yet at the same time could be introducing Mario to a newer audience. That's just impressive. That's just so impressive to be able to incorporate so much of Mario's legacy into one movie and to do it in a very entertaining and good way. Oh, stay after, stay all the way to the end because there might be a sequel. And if you go to the very, very end of this movie, you might get a little hint of what might be in that sequel, which I'm already just a little hit. I was like, yup, that's a perfect idea for the sequel. And I'm so ready for it. Yeah, dude, I freaking had a blast at this movie. Freaking love it. By the way, if you get a chance, check out the Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong official podcast. I'm actually a guest on it. It's my first time ever being on there. And I defend the 1993 Super Mario Brothers movie. I love that movie. Trust the fungus.